All right. So pretty much the context of all of the conversations that I have about COVID-19 are around our need, uh, our current need, matter of fact, for um, economic stimulus. And we, we still do have that need, especially since uh, we do not yet have the passage of a stimulus package. But something that a lot of people, myself included, are guilty of not really talking about is the very frank level of power that governments, not just our own government here in the United States, but governments across the globe are gaining immense power. And we're talking power that uh, either they didn't have before, or um, if they would have even tried to acquire that type of power or that level of power in the past, their citizenry would have um, very sharply, very quickly fought back and fought against the acquisition of said power. So I find it interesting, again, and I'm examining myself as well, that even amidst these conversations around economic stimulus, something that we do not talk about, that we have not talked about, is the fact that governments are gaining more power. Now, there, I'd be remiss uh, for not acknowledging the fact that some people by nature, um, through, you know, either their own personal experience or in, in relation to their political allegiance or alliance, they, for whatever reason, you know, just don't even like government. They don't, I, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, um, when I talk about the gaining of power, I'm talking about governments gaining power, power that even people who were, um, for the most part, okay, giving government some form of power, a level of power that even those people would more likely than not have an issue with. Um, but in this moment with what we're going through in dealing with COVID-19, specifically those people, people who would otherwise be okay with handing over some government power in exchange for some type of benefit that they would get in return. Uh, even they probably in normal times would have a problem with the level of power that governments are starting to assume. And obviously the people on the other side, the people who are, you know, absolutely no government power over my dead body, those people most certainly um, you know, would in normal times fight against the the acquisition of the type of power uh, that governments are now assuming. Um, but again, a lot of people, you know, they're they're just trying to live, and in trying to live, they're not paying attention to, or they are willing to overlook the fact that governments are really going for the power grab. When we consider the uh, unprecedented expansion of power that governments are are getting and going for. It's again, it's not just happening here in the United States. It's happening in many, 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 many countries. Um, I, for, I referenced before the people who uh, you know, are, you know, advocates of small government and advocates of no government in, in some respects. Um, I think they have a legitimate concern when they bring up this very thing. Uh, and let me let me tell you what that thing is. <sighs> a lot of people question when we are going to go back to, I'm using air quotes here that you can't see, normal. Well, advocates of small government, those who are kind of paying attention to the power grab, are bringing up the question of, our states, not, and I don't mean like, you know, Utah, Nevada, I, like governmental states, are these states going to be willing or reluctant to give up the power that they've acquired in this in the, these last few months? Um, especially when you consider that historically, when a state is able to grab a certain level of power, they don't give it back. Um, I'm not saying that that hasn't always been been the case, but for the most part, as, as I mean, you can kind of see the same things with the citizens as well. For instance, um, when you give citizens benefits such as, uh, uh, let's just say like Medicare, you know, it's very hard 
um, to give that type of social benefit and then take 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 it away because people have benefited from it. And the reverse is said for the states. When we give them a certain level of power, when the time passes where that power is no longer warranted, um, historically, they are not willing to concede the power that they've attained. And I will say that I am not necessarily personally one of those small government advocates, but there there is some legitimacy, especially when you look at the the, his, the historical aspect of this argument and what has happened throughout history. There is legitimacy to the argument of uh, questioning if the states are not just willing, but even able to give that power away. Consider this, for instance, you know, okay, we've had a, like 80 some odd countries, they've declared a state of emergency in response to the pandemic. But of those 84, uh, 84, 85, something like that, um, there is an organization called Reporters Without Borders. And they have claimed that almost half of those countries have restricted freedom of the press. And that might seem kind of unrelated. Well, you know, well, you know, but freedom of the press compared to the pandemic, again, you may not be able to make the the, the connection um, because quite frankly, it doesn't really seem like there's a connection, but that is just one demonstration of ways in which states are uh, limiting the the powers of the people uh, and in a way seeking to uh, amass their own power again by going so far as to limit the press. One second here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have got to find a way to not really have interruptions while I'm recording. Um, anywho, so it, it, I'm not going to make this long, um, you know, so that's kind of one way that, that we've seen governments have more power. Um, and again, we're talking about nearly half of the governments that have declared states of emergency due to the pandemic. Um, the main thing that that I think is a clear connection for most people uh, in how governments are acquiring more power through the pandemic is um, the unveiling of large scale surveillance programs that they are that they are doing in the name of contact tracing. Now, hear me out. As an organization, again, we are absolutely fighting for COVID-19 economic stimulus and relief. And as part of that, we are also looking to and we acknowledge the fact that you can't really have economic relief if you don't have the relief uh, that is uh directly speaking to the pandemic itself the addressing of covid-19 and so um that considered uh do i think that covid the, excuse me that contact tracing is necessary absolutely um but again it's kind of one of those things where um you're giving up a lot of privacy to the state in order for them to um make sure that members of society are safe. Does that need to be done? Yes. You know, I, I'd, I'd be insane to say that we shouldn't contact trace. But again, this is an example of us kind of trading our privacy, um, giving up something to the state in exchange for a perceived benefit. Um, and I think that contact tracing is more than a perceived benefit. I think that we have found that um, it is highly effective. So I would never even attempt to make the argument against it. But again, even still, even that considered, that still is a prime example of how states have amassed power that before citizens of said states would for the most part, not been willing to give. They wouldn't have been willing to give that level of power to states. Um, and so, yeah, there is an impact on privacy that your, you know, again, advocates of small government, if they make the argument against contact tracing, you can see how they might make that con that, that uh, argument. Um, but as a society, we have to find a way 
to recognize the arguments, recognize the validity of the arguments, and address those arguments while at the same time not uh, not putting ourselves at more risk than is necessary. Again, I'm not saying this because I'm saying, oh, we don't need to contact race. We absolutely do. But uh, I don't want people under the illusion that um, you were not giving up anything. You were giving up your right to privacy. And I want you to consider history and consider that when states um, do acquire mass amounts of power, historically, they do not concede that power. So as you consider what our new normal is going to be like, just how I have said before in relation to the likelihood of getting economic stimulus before the election, and, you know, I'm like not a prophet, nothing like that, not, a, you know, um, but I think the signs were there. I think the signs are also here, not just in this present moment, but historically. The signs are here to say that our new normal will include all of us giving up, giving up some of our privacy. Uh, and uh, I think we have to prepare for that. I think that um, individuals and organizations that have concern about privacy, um, you need to kind of start thinking about that now because we are not going back to the normal that we had before. Um, you were kidding yourself even after a vaccine, even after the numbers go down. The normal we had before is gone. It's it's something that a lot of people don't want to contend with, especially because we don't know what it will look like. Uh, we are creatures of habit. We don't like change. But change is not only coming. Change is here. Change is absolutely here. And so think about that because governments have gained more power. Uh, and again, I know that we are an organization that focuses on economic stimulus, but um, this is kind of part of the equation that I want you to think about because uh, this is this this matters. You know, this this absolutely matters.